Okay, well, praise God. Good morning, everybody. We're certainly proud that you could be with us this morning. Honored. We're going to take a few minutes like we do every week to allow a few folks to jump on here and uh, ask you that as, as you're getting on here, maybe to share it to others. I want to be able to pull this up on our monitor. Let me look at this real quick. This here. Hey, there we go. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. So as we're getting ready to uh, start our weekly Bible study message, what a what a privilege it is again to have you with us this morning. So we're going to just take a few moments and get situated. Some of you that are getting on here, uh, can let me know a little bit about the music. Trying to watch what you watch in here. Let me see if I can get us pulled up. Miss Ford, Diane, good morning. Hopefully that music, I'm going to go ahead and maybe pull that down for a second. Okay. That might be a little bit better. Good morning, everybody. Glad you could be with us. We've got some folks out here jumping on. What an honor it is to have you guys with us. We're getting ready to have our uh, Bible study called Writing on Course. I'm Scott Mendes with Western Harvest Ministries, and uh, just very excited about coming to you this morning. Uh, I've got a great message lined out and a study that we can go through God's Word together. Oh, thank you, Lord. So if you have uh, a chance to be able to share this, um, I know we're not real professional and formal in a lot of this technology stuff, but uh, we will repost this uh, broadcast later throughout the day, and you can have that link uh, for uh, you know for your viewing as you can. So we're real excited about what God is doing uh, with Western Harvest, uh, with USA Yo, my national speaking. Uh, group of friends and partners. Uh, I want to counsel you if uh, you would like me to come in and speak at any of your functions, myself and our other speakers, simply go to usayo.org and click on the profile. There may be some guys closer to you. We have them all over the nation. And I am blessed and honored to be a part of such a great group that uh, we go out and speak and travel. Do a lot of my work through the FCA Cowboy chapter. Uh, so that's where we get a chance to come in and speak to rodeo clubs, junior rodeos, high school assemblies. Uh, we like to go back home to Reno, Nevada and do the big Reno Role Model Summit. That has been uh, an incredible blessing over the years. So anyway, uh, as we get ready to get started, we're on a little bit of a time frame each week. Uh, as you know, if you have your Bibles out, get them. I'm going to go over some scriptural reference. And, uh, and as we study God's word this morning, I want to uh, have a little opening. I want to read a few things, and then we'll get into the message. Um, having said that, as some folks are jumping on here, uh, again, what a privilege and an honor it is to be coming to you. After we pray towards the end, I'll have a couple uh, little house cleaning announcements, and we can talk a little bit more about um, how you can partner with us, some of the things that we're working on within our media and so forth. So we're real excited. We got some great things coming up here in the, in the next few weeks uh, in our area, in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, also, I want to remind you guys if you get a chance, you go into your app store, and I believe it'll pull up if you just type in Western Harvest, my name, but for sure it comes up under Writing on Course uh, Bible app. Now, nothing has really changed on the front end of it because we're working on it behind the scenes. When we do stuff on the back end of it we make it go live and then when it goes live everything is kind of new and adjusted so don't uh, uh, not use that app just because it's not looking different it'll send you scriptures throughout the day and uh, we're going to try to partner with you through that app as my travels and my schedule picks up uh, we want to be able to communicate with you no matter where we're at we're going to come to you each week whether it's in a truck at a rodeo wherever we're at we'll try to film it uh, we, we need more people involved. So thank you for partnering with us. As we get started this morning, we've got some folks on here. I just want to talk uh, briefly. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Miss Ford, Daryl, all you guys. Thank you so much for being with us. Listen, on our prayer requests, this is a difficult time because we have many of them. I want to pray uh, generally over some of the needs of the partner. 
And I want to specifically pray for our country, our world, Israel. Uh, I think it's so important that the times that we live in, that we're aware and that we're watchmen and that we're uh, being able to discern what is taking place because we can't fight a battle unless we know what that battle is. Amen. A lot of times the devil tries to get us to fight each other, fight denominations, a lot of stuff, different races, colors, creeds, you know, that, that's a bunch of hoopla. What we need to do is fight our battles on our knees in prayer, put on the full armor of God and engage our culture and be a living epistle and an example of who Christ is in our life and God will honor that and it'll help a lot of people uh, to be set free. So my prayer requests always deal with physical healing, uh, maybe hearing God's voice, um, again, uh, uh, helping our partners to uh, just be in God's, God's will. As I'm looking down through the list, there's so many, there's lost loved ones, uh, transitions in different occupations, Look, these are life. We A lot of us, you know, we're going to go through life and we have these decisions and choices to make. So we just want to lift up and pray over these requests that I see here. Please keep them coming in. Uh, if I don't get a chance to pray with you personally, we'll write them down. Miss Angel, my wife, helps me in administration. We'll, we'll reach out to you. So a lot of people communicate with us on different social media platforms or texting uh, whatever you want to do, just let us know what those needs are. Amen. I want to pray with you this morning because we have to watch our time. Thank you again for tuning in. I believe that this message is going to bless us as we apply it with faith over our life. Amen. So let's get ready to pray. Pray. <clears throat> pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. Father, we thank you that you are a good God. Lord, that you are a sovereign God, and Lord, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And Lord, we exalt you. It is our desire to worship you, to seek after you, Father God, to lay down our lives, Lord, because of the sacrifice that your Son, Jesus, made for us. So we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask that this message, Lord, would edify, strengthen, engage, and equip us uh, to discern and look for the opportunities, Lord, to minister your love with a hurting world. Father, we pray over our country right now. There's Matthew 24 is so relative in our life, Lord. Daniel, Isaiah, uh, Old Testament, New Testament prophecies are being uh, manifested right now for those that are watching what has happened. Lord, let us not be afraid of that revelation, Lord, but let us embrace it. And let us be on the front end, on the front lines of what you are doing over this earth, Lord, because you are the ruler of all things, Lord. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. So, Father, I thank you this morning that our partners can and are being healed, Lord, where there is grief, there is hope. Where there is mourning, Father, there will be joy. Father, where there is a need for sickness, may you give wisdom over doctors and strategies and discernment of how to take care of the bodies that you have given us, Lord God, the temples. Let us be good stewards over not only our physical healing, Lord, but our emotional healings, Lord, over our spiritual man, that we would protect it and guard it and let your word be settled as final authority over every decision we make, Father God, so that we can be acceptable and perfect and pleasing in your sight. Lord, I know you love us, and so as we minister your word, may your Holy Spirit take it into the hearts and the minds of those that are needing breakthroughs today, Lord. Let anything I say, Father, from your word bless our partners. Lord, let it dwell richly in them as they meditate on your word. You will give strategy. You will give answers. We will become disciples. We will be servant leaders, Lord, not mixing the culture of this world and putting your label on it, Father. No, we're going to be Christians in every attribute of our life. So I thank you, Father, for this morning and pray over this message in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I'm so excited. I'm going to be able to keep up with this monitor. Hopefully, I'll just check this every now and then and make sure that we've got uh, a little bit of audio going forth. Good morning, Carrie. 
Uh, wonderful. Good to see you, Miss Gail, Scotty Williams, all you guys. Thank you very much. So we've got a lot of folks on here this morning. Uh, thank you, Daryl and the Cowboy, the pen, uh, for you guys promoting it out there across the nation. I'm so excited about God's Word. This message that I've prepared is really a fun message. I think it's one that we just simply need to, uh, you know, look at something that we have a paradigm shift over our relationship, you know, with where we're at currently with the Lord. Now, before I do that, I want to take a moment. Many of you know that I like to open up. I'm not a big storyteller. I read a devotion every morning. You can see I've had to just spline it together with athletic tape, much like my body when I was rodeoing. But I read these little messages to open up and allow the presence of God's Holy Spirit to be uh, helping us to open us up to what we want to minister on today. So as an opening, I want to read this little devotion. It only takes a minute. I know it'll bless you. And then we'll get into the teaching this morning with writing on Course Weekly Bible Study. Thank you so much for being with us. Listen to this. Commitment. Now this is indirectly uh, ties to what I want to minister on today. It says, no man stood with me, but all the men forsook me, notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion's den. That is 2 Timothy 4, verses 16 and 17. Again, commitment. It's not directly what we're going to talk about, but we need that in faith to apply to what we will talk about today. Listen to this as we just open up our hearts and minds to the word of God. Listen to these words. Until I am committed, there is a hesitancy, a chance to draw back. But the moment I definitely commit myself, then God moves also, and a whole stream of events begin. All manner of unforeseen incidents, meetings, people, material assistance for which I never dreamed began to move towards me. Oh, praise God. I'm so glad that God hears our prayer. God sees our commitment. And there is no hesitancy if you are walking with him today. The moment I make that commitment, have you made that commitment yet? I'm going to ask you today to commit to your relationship with God the Father, his Son, and the Holy Spirit in your life. Whatever he's called you to commit to, I want you to do that. And I hope this message draws us closer into that. If I could pick one word to describe commitment, I would pick the word alone. Daniel denied and prayed alone. Elijah sacrificed and witnessed alone. Jeremiah prophesied and wept alone. Paul said, all men forsake me, notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. That was our opening scripture here. The place of commitment is the place where God intervenes on your and my behalf. When the three Hebrew children made the commitment, God brought them out of the fiery furnace without even smelling like smoke upon them. You can't even do that in a well non-smoking section these days. Amen. I, I agree with that. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was also impressed so impressed that he said this, there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. Now that's the God that we're glorifying. That's the God that we're accepting today. That's the God that we're going to focus on and not on our circumstances. We're going to do the upside down paradigm shift from what we've allowed in our minds and our heart to take us farther from God even when we're putting forth the effort. We've got to line that up and filter it through God's word. Amen. So uh, let me read that again. No other God. This is coming from Nebuchadnezzar. No other God who is able to deliver in this way. That's what the world is waiting for. Somebody who will put everything on the line, get into the fiery furnace, and let the world see God's power. Man, there's a boldness that rides up in me when I think about commitment. I know in my personal life, the commitments that I've made and more importantly, my mentors, and more importantly, my Bible heroes. By faith, the Hall of Fame, Hebrews chapter 11, men of God, women of God stood up and committed, and heaven and earth move on that commitment when we 
decree and declare the things of God over our life. And so this morning, I want you to think about where you are in your commitment with God. What does God ask you uh, or I to do in our walk with him? Amen. The title of this morning's message, I, I've got some questions. I've got some uh, scriptures that I'm going to go through. Just write them down, meditate on them. Many of the scriptures in our life and our teaching uh, or, or scriptures over and over again because they, they apply to the New Testament times that we live in. Amen. Listen to this. The title of this morning's message is Just Trying to Get By. I hear people every day, myself included, you ask them how they're doing and they're just trying to get by. Well, in the signs of the times and the prophetic times that we live in, that's not a good way to approach our relationship with our Heavenly Father. So the message this morning, just trying to get by. Now this is, quote, just a saying. I do want to in, in, in interject this right here, that we are, in this time, in my opinion, things that help me is to take one day at a time, but that's different than just trying to get by. Because if you're just trying to get by, you're half-heartedly uncommitted to your relationship with God. So let's answer some questions this morning. Let's look at some scriptures here today as we study the God's word. What are the bonds of Christian liberty? What is the least that I can do to still get by and go to heaven? Man, I have seen it in my personal family life. I have seen it in my ministry travels, and I hear it all the time in young people's life as well. They want to serve God because their heart is trying to fill that void. We are all created in the divine image of our Father, conformed into the image of Christ, made in His image. And so apart from Him, we can do nothing. But we see right here, many people are just trying to get by. They want the blessings, but they're not willing to go bake the cake, to go to the store, get the ingredients, take the time to mix it all up, then to pray over it, to put it in the oven, to refine it. To, to nurture it. It's like the farmer. You put the seed in the ground, but the, heart, the, the crop doesn't come up instantly. It takes a time that we are called to pray in faith. And so when we see this, what is the least I can do to just still get by and go to heaven? Or just trying to get by? That's no way to live. And I want to rebuke that. I want to curse that. I want to come against that. Because in today's teaching, these questions, these scriptures will help us uh, and, and, and come into that revelation a little bit more. Amen. Uh, let's, out, let's look at this. If you're asking this question, you're already on a false road. And you won't make it to heaven under the, that, that, that mindset. Okay? Let's give God our best, our first love, our first fruit, our finances, our service, our willing to cooperate with his word in our life. Amen? Let's look at this as, as a short introductory. Let's talk about this. The question lacks a motivation to serve the Lord with your whole heart. And again, this is going to be the thrust of what we want to minister on today. Just trying to get by. Where is that leading you? How's that been working for your life? We've got to do more. We have to engage this culture. We can't just sit back and say, somebody else will do it. Let's elect a politician to go into office with knowing we elected him one way, but yet he turns out that he's compromised when he gets to the big swamp in D.C. and realizes that he cannot, his power is limitless. Amen. Nobody else is going to do what God has called you and me to do. We need to rise up and do that. Conquer the beast in our life. What holds us back? So that's a question that lacks motivation. Let's put motivation through commitment to serve God with all of our heart. For his plans are good and he knows your heart. You're lying to yourself, and you're allowing the fuel of the devil to immobilize your life when we walk this way, when we're just trying to get by. Here's a question that indicates that no one can let go of the world and put their trust in God. You can't be double-minded and expect that you would receive anything from God. Amen. Uh, the question indicates uh, that we can't let go of the world. God warns us that we cannot love the world and still receive his eternal blessings amen now i know if you're a young christian you're talking about man i can't do this i can't do that you know what when you radically get saved and you ask jesus into your heart you no longer have that desire for the things of the world 
Your desires are new. Your desires, how can I witness to my friends? How can I be an example? How can I take a stand for righteousness? How can I be discipled? How can I be mentored into faith and have new friends and have new vision? Where there is no vision, people will perish. Amen. And so our lives are a, a byproduct of the choices that we have made. Amen. So let's make good choices. Let's go on and look. This is the part where I want to read some scriptures uh, to us today. It's going to help us to focus on God. What are some of the limitations in scriptures? Now, I cut these scriptures out. Sometimes I've got to speed over them because of time. I read from the New King James Version. Let's look at the first one. What are some of the limitations uh, uh, from God's word over our life? Let's look at James 4.4. 4. Amen? It says, You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Amen? We, we preach that. We, we quote it pretty much every weekly, every week. And, 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 and I can't say how to do it. There's not a one, two, three... You know, all these things. We can live by principles and we can begin that journey. But God will, wants to speak to you in your quiet time, through your disciple classes, through the things engaging God, through a song. God will speak to you and say, I want you to do this. Separate yourself early in the morning and come and pray to me that day. And so there are principles that we can live by. But James is saying that this is an adulterous Generation, and you can't have the world and have God too. Second John chapter verse nine says this: Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ. See, I see a lot of people going far and they're abiding in teachings, but is your teaching from Anthony Robbins? Uh, a lot of times, the world uses God's principles uh, for self gain. But we can't do that. We want to use freely what has been given to us, the love, the admiration, the fear of the Lord, the wisdom of God. We want to use those to help our brothers and sisters, much like we're doing today. So 2 John verse 9 says this, Anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Well, deception would be to think that you have God or you have a relationship with God because you're going to church. Or because you think about him for a couple hours on a Sunday morning. There's more of a commitment. There's more of a relationship. And those commitments lead us into growing spiritually, which will produce a better harvest in our life. Amen. So the end of that says, does not have God. The ones who abide in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. Praise God. The Comforter, the Teacher, the Holy Spirit is longing to minister to you today. You see, he's not welcome in religion. Sometimes he's not even welcome in some of your churches. Sometimes he's not welcome on your mainstream platforms. He's sensitized to keep the very thing that you and I need. Sometimes he's not welcome in our Constitution. Amen? And so as we get into these things, we see that you can't have both, and we have to follow in the pure teachings of Christ. Jesus plus nothing. Get to know the man. Get to know Jesus. James chapter 4, 8. Again, we're talking about the mindset of just trying to get by because that's going to lead you down a road of deception into a place of nowhere, no victory, immobilized, glorifying the God of this earth, Satan, with a small g. We're talking about God with a capital G. We're looking greater over our circumstances because we are focusing on God. Look at James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Clean your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Amen. Number one, i got to recognize I'm a sinner, but my life has been transformed. I can't give my mind the ability to think that I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You'll never grow spiritually if you have that on the bumper sticker of your car. Yes, I'm a sinner, but I am called to grow. I'm, 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 I'm building a relationship and a covenant with my God, and he's going to help me. I heard it said this week, when your mind is so full, there's no place for the enemy's lie. 
lives to take root. Amen. We fill our minds. We renew our minds. We set our minds on the things above, not on the things of earth. One more scripture in this category. Hebrews 4.16 says this. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace. Now, this is not hyper grace, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit. I want to make sure that we're not misusing the gifts and the fruits of God. Amen. So, uh, this is true grace that we're talking about here. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us draw near to with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of needs. Amen. We serve a, a merciful God. We need to go to him when we have problems, when we have needs in our life. He knows those needs that we have. He loves us. He wants to very much help us in those times. Amen. So these are just a few limitations that I've written down, scriptures that we've researched this morning. We're talking about many people are just trying to get by. That's not advancing God's kingdom. God is looking for the remnant church. His true believers that get outside of the church, that get outside of their denomination, get outside of their politics, and don't put God in a box and grow with him. They're discipled. They know what God has done for them. They're not just living on three points in a poem. Amen? God is good. Let's look at some other limitations. But these are limitations of liberty. Amen? While we become free from our sins, through our obedience, we do not have the freedom to sin. Amen. Let me read that again. We have, when, while we become free from our sins through our obedience, we do not have freedom to sin. This is what we're going to talk about. I've already read my notes and prepared this, but I want to talk about, again, the, the sacrifice that Christ has made and the grace that he offers us through his mercy when we come confidently and boldly to the throne of grace listen to this many teach that the grace of god which is free amen it's free but we have to access that and it's purity and it and it's love god looks and sees jesus as thus and so thus we can be saved because of the sacrifice of jesus but that's not how it works so let's look at it again Many teach that the grace of God, which is free, overlooks sin. See, when we have sin in our life, we are to bring that to the foot of the cross. And we're to ask God to help us to uproot it. Sometimes we out, uproot the things in our life in the natural, but we forget to go into the spiritual, soulish part of man. The mind, the will, the emotion. We clear our house of symbolism. We clear our house of trophies. We... We take those things out of our hearts because, out of our homes, because we want to Satan proof our home. Amen. Let me read that again. Uh, many teach of that kind of grace, which is free, and it overlooks sin. So if we have sin in our life, God looks at and sees Jesus, and thus we have been saved because of Jesus' sacrifice. In my notes here, I wrote, What have you and I sacrificed? Because my Bible tells me to take up my cross. And to follow him. And see, I think sometimes people still want to party and fit in, but they still want to have the grace and the mercy of God. Don't allow hyper grace in your life. Separate yourself for a season and let God spiritually mature you. Let God show you the wounds that we have in our heart. He is the father of the fatherless, okay? That's not how, that's not how grace works. So we looked at limitations. Uh, from the scriptures, we looked at limitations from liberty and not to confuse those. Yes, we're old sinners, but we're saved by grace, true grace. When we see sin in our life, we take it and we deal with it. Unconfessed sin is the worst. God knows it's in there. You may be able to fool everybody around you, but you can't fool God. And that's why we keep going around the same mountain over and over again like our brothers and sisters the Israelites complaining and murmuring and not decreeing victory, calling those things that be not as though they were and having a stance that is worthy and acceptable before God. Amen. So this here's the problem that we're talking about this morning. Man, we're doing somewhat good on time. Thank you guys very much. Hello, Miss Sabine. 
Daryl, all you guys. Everything seems to be going good. Here's the problem. People do not like uh, restrictions put on their life. The flesh does not like these restrictions. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, embrace those restrictions and you'll break the bondage of deception in your life over your family. You see, if we're not in our place, our family suffers. Amen. So there's a covering and a victory that we need to walk in. Amen. Let's talk about some more of our problems. God, by demanding obedience, is restricting what many people want to do. Again, if you're religious and you think you're a Christian by label, you haven't been transformed. You're trying to have the world and have God, and God will have no part of that. He'll leave you right where you're at until he breaks your free will. And he allows you to go down that road. Amen. You don't want to be double-minded. You don't want to be serving God by just trying to get by, by going to a dead church that just gives three poems and a message, three points and a message. There's no, there's no teaching involved in that. There's no growth. Amen. I'm not against the church. I'm not against different people's uh, beliefs and ideologies. But when it gets right down to it, it's about our covenant with God. God will provide you with mentors. God will give you the tools that you need to be discipled, but you first have to want to be signed up for those classes and those growth in your life. Amen. You want to have a desire for the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. That is the liberty of being in Christ. He says when we are faithful to address unconfessed sin in our life we have a mindset that is full of doubt and unbelief how can we expect God to move on that God always gets the blame for that but all we're doing is we've listened to a lie so God demands obedience is restricting that many people do not want that is not fair in most people's mind I don't care what I think is fair in my mind I care about what God's word tells me to put in my mind and meditate on those things which are pure, holy, and just day and night so that all my ways may be successful. I don't care how successful you are in this world. I don't care what your success principles are. Without Christ, you will be defeated. You will be deceived. And you will not be growing spiritually. And you will not be evangelizing this world for Christ. And thus, the church will not be doing her part to save America, to save the souls of those that are lost, whether they're in their addictions or who they are, what they've done. You have never gone so far that you can run away from the grace and the love of God in its purest form. Amen. And Christians, by label only, are not doing what they should be doing today. And I want to raise up with you my partners, and make a difference in this world for Christ. How do we do that? That's what we're talking about this morning. Uh, every religion has its own restrictions. Amen. But I'm not talking about religion this morning. I'm talking about relationship with a God that loves you so much that he sent his son, perfect, to be an example, to show us that he has compassion for these problems that we find ourselves in this fallen world identify in your life today what battle you're fighting what playing field you're on what tools god has given you to fight with in the word what mindset he's required that we have so that when we speak them we see them and we hear them down in our physical senses we get energized with hope that we can engage this world and overcome because the one who loved us has already overcome the world, we could care less what kind of personal persecution, what kind of setbacks we have. We're going to say to our giants, we're going to cut your head off today and feed it to the fowl of the air because you have not a covenant with God, and I do, and we do. Amen. It's not about any individual other than Jesus being exalted and glorified for being kings of our life and, and coming back for us soon. Amen? But we're not going to just hang on and barely get by and, and uh, 
try to get by every day little by little so that when the Lord comes, he can save us and get us out of here. Man, with what's going on the last couple years, I've had to study God's word in a new revelation. My mindset of how I was taught on the rapture, my mindset of taught what's going on in our government, everything is being exposed and revealed. Do you want to be blessed or cursed in these coming years? God is the one that's shaking this up. So I'm okay with what's going on, but I want to see the harvest in my life personally, in our ministry, in our community, our state, and our world for Christ. But it doesn't happen when we sit around and just try to barely get by. All right, we got to move on. Let's talk about that. So every religion has its restrictions. The problem is that each and every religion are so uh, are are those who seek to lessen the severity of ignoring the restrictions that God has for us. God's restriction for us is out of love. Those boundaries that He sets up in His commandments, the things that He knows. We're unable to do apart from him. We do them with him. We go to him and he helps us. And so every false religion is setting up restrictions and all they're wanting to do is water it down and misinterpret, misinform you of what true sin is. That's the smoke and mirror we see in our government today. That's the smoke and mirror we see in all the, the things that are plaguing our world. And when you buy into it, it is devastating. It immobilizes you from being an effective Christian in your walk in this world. Amen. So just know this. Every religion's restriction is a watered down of what God's word commands. And it is a deception. So it has some truth in it. But there's a lie. And at the end of that lie, it leads to separation, damnation, and bondage in your life. The problem is, we talked about that. We also have double standards when it applies to men and women. You know, a man can cheat on his wife and people say, okay, no big deal. If a woman cheats on her husband, she's a hussy, right? We see this, okay? The same thing is true about social injustice. We've seen it all on the news. A white man doesn't get judged the same way a black man does. These are things that I'm just bringing into culture of the times that we live in, amen, right here. They get judged differently. I'm here to tell you there is both good and bad with every color, every race, every d denomination. All those things at the end of the day should bring us into the love and the admiration that God created us all. Yes, we can get along, but we're not going to get along on steps of how we get to God, steps about what sin is. Sin is sin. Call it for what it is. I don't need to go through a man to get to my heavenly father in religion. There are religions that are controlling, watering down the and nullifying the effects of God's word by the tradition of our men and false religions. And the governments are twisting and perverting and destroying the constitution of the liberty that says it won't even work if you don't keep God in the middle of it. Amen. So we're not just trying to get by. We're going to push back and engage. Listen to this. Uh, people who are different cultures allow different cultures to dictate what is right and wrong rather than allowing God's word to be what dictates what is right or wrong. Amen. You cannot be a true Christian and have racism. You cannot be a true Christian and separate this group of people because of their beliefs politically. God doesn't, you know, he doesn't want us to uh, just withdraw in such a way, but we teach, we love. Paul said, I become all things to all men that yet some of them may be saved. Amen. So we love all denominations, all creeds, all things, but we must end up on Christ crucified, Christ resurrected, Christ dying for your sins, and Christ calling us into right standing, into holiness, discernment of the Jewish calendar, of the signs of the times, and his plans for our life. Amen. So we see that. It does not matter who you are, what you've done, how do you come into this teaching this morning, just trying to get by. 
doesn't work. Amen. God has given man the seed of his word to produce harvests and victories in every area of our life. And when it doesn't work, I examine my heart. I examine my mind, my mind, my choices. Those will determine my actions. My actions will determine the outcome of my life. I may need to do something radical today so that I'm not insane by thinking I'll do the same thing, knowing because I've heard something, but I've not applied it. To hear the word and not to apply it with faith is to deceive yourself. I am accountable to the word that I read in my quiet time. I'm accountable to the word that I preach and that I live or exemplify in my relationship with God. Amen. So we can preach the world, but if we have not love, we are a sounding symbol to the rest of the world. Now, I got to go on to some of these questions. Listen to this. God has, has always had limitations. Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17. I've got about 15 minutes, so bear with me. The scripture says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, From all, from from any tree in the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you must not eat. For in that day that if you eat from it, you will surely die. You know, I don't care about all the science. I don't care about a lot of stuff. It's misused. God's allowed the mind of man to create that when we don't use it to advance kingdom, to, to help our bodies, to help our abilities to reach more people in the times that we live in you know uh it, it's being misused and so we see right here in in, in genesis 2 16 to 17 there was deception in the garden by the serpent isn't it funny that that's what we're being that's how we're being bitten today by everything that's going on we're just being bitten with them uh, uh, the the venom of the 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 enemy the serpent satan we must be watchmen. We must, must be watchful. And again, people will debate you because surely Adam and Eve didn't die that day. But yes, they did. Because even though their physical bodies were ejected from the Garden of Eden, they died spiritually because they didn't have that relationship that they once had with God. And so I'm thinking that people that are just trying to barely get by every day and hoping that they slip into the gates of heaven, they're dead spiritually. I'm talking to all of us. I've been dead spiritually. I want to be awakened to the things of God, and I want to make a difference in many lives, starting with mine. If I can't do it right here, I can't do it anywhere. So we've got to live this. We've got to apply it. We've got to get out of disobedience. We've got to be swift to run to faithfulness, and God's fruit of the Spirit will be produced in our life if we come out from among them and be ye separate. And be an example. Listen to this. So the Ten Commandments is another example. The Mosaic Law of Christ had limitations. Amen. What is the Mosaic Law? What did God give to Moses? Those Ten Commandments. You know, don't hate, don't steal, don't covet your wife. These are still great to live by. And apart from him, we can't do those things. But we need him in our life. We need to be aware of them. We need to set the bar here. Instead of watering it down and playing games in our churches and in the things that we think that we're doing by labels and affiliation and not opening up our hearts and yielding passionately to serve him and not just trying to get by. Amen. You can see why this message is so important. Um, even with the freedom in Christ, we have limitations. But when you're transformed and you renew your mind to God's word and you accept him into your life, you'll embrace those limitations. You know that it's not good to go out and party. It's not good to watch those things on TV that is full of cussing. I'm getting a little put out with the fact that there's things that are portraying my lifestyle, but full of, of, full of vulgar. That, that's not the truth. That is scripted reality TV. And when I watch that, it grieves the, whole, the heart of the Holy Spirit. I don't watch it. I turn off the trailer. Amen. I'm in the world, but I'm not part of it. 
and I'm not trying to put my convictions on you, but I know that God will have the same limitations and the same restrictions on you because together, if we don't fuel the world system, we'll have our own system, and it's called the kingdom of God, and it's in his word and in his book right here. Amen? Let me read some questions to you real quickly. These are just things that I have written down to help us to understand and enforce what we're talking about today. Amen. I've just, I've got to keep moving on. So here's some questions. Back to our title, just barely getting by. I want to ask you, what can I do? You know, these are, this is the mindset we're trying to break. What can I do or not do as a Christian and still be pleasing to God? It's no way to live double-minded. The Bible says that a double-minded man should not expect that he would receive anything from God, but his own confusion, his own deception. You track it back, follow the money, follow the thoughts. And where did you pick it up? Did you pick it up on the evening news? Did you pick it up in a tabloid? There's no sin that doesn't manifest that it didn't start somewhere. The thought that enters your mind drops down into your heart. You water it, you cultivate it, and you will have what that seed was motivated and intended to do in your life. And as a Christian, when we put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, belt of truth, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. When we are armored up, ready to engage this world, that seed will not come into my mind because there's no place for it. And it is contrary to what mind, the same mind that Christ had, you and I are supposed to have in our life. There's no room for deception or lies from the enemy. Listen to these questions. That is a wrong attitude, obviously. Am I a Christian by name only? These are my thoughts about these questions. Or do I have, do I live like I am supposed to? I can't answer that for you. I know individually the things that God does to transform life and to create testimonies to take us out of our complaining and our deception and our upbringing, our victim mentality. God brings us out of those when we break our free, free will and we trust him. But you can't just be a Christian and go to church and expect to have victory and a power and anointing to put the devil in his place. I'm not doing that. Christ already did it. I'm standing on the victory that Christ gave me through his rem written and spoken word over my life. Amen. That's why we have to be bold. Am I doing anything that brings glory to God? Answer that question. I don't know about you. We're trying to through this ministry. I pray that somebody will see this and say, man, I haven't done anything for the Lord. I am motivated to quit trying to live and just barely getting by and expecting God to bless me and let me in heaven someday if the rapture comes, when the rapture comes. I'm not even worried about the rapture. When my father comes and I look up and I draw near, my redeemer comes near at that time, it'll be a joyful moment. But until then, we need to be busy about the father's business. And we need to engage and take back our country in the judicial Christian values that we have as men and women that call ourselves Christians. Amen? Uh, do I want to go to heaven? Am I willing to give up in order to go into heaven? My rodeo career, man, I had to make choices. They weren't popular. I don't care about popularity because I just became a Christian and I wanted to please God more than I wanted to please men. And as it turns out, the more I honor God, the more God honors us as a family and me. And I'm not just saying that for me. I want that blessing to be upon your life over your family. But you can't cut any rungs on the ladder or any simple get quick rich uh, false doctrine steps. You can't listen to these motivational speakers in their big churches telling you to send them their money so that you can be blessed. I don't care who sees this. We have to stand on our own two feet, but we have to stand in the power of God's word. That doesn't mean that we don't support the ministry. We need money in God's kingdom effectively planted and maturing and leading this world rather than sowing into the devil and Hollywood and everything else. So be with me, my brothers and sisters. So are you willing to let go in order to go up? True disciples follow Christ. Um, Am I willing to grow and develop into a better Christian? Will my behavior demonstrate my love of God or with my fellowship with the world? Only you can answer that. Let me say that again. Will my behavior demonstrate my love for God uh, or will it show my friendship with the world? Do my friends even know that I am a Christian? 
I hope so. I pray that you stand up with God in such a way that everybody knows. They start judging Christians and locking them up because they love God. We want to be the first ones and we want to have enough evidence to, to make us guilty the moment they find us. Amen? Because we're not playing. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, my God is able to deliver me. It's his choice whether he does or not. Either way, to be out of this body and out of this world is to be present with my God. And he will judge my life based on what we have done here. I'm not looking at that judgment day at the moment. I'm trying to live my life according to God's word. And when I do that, I'm not just trying to barely get by. Amen. So let's go on. Uh, do my friends see that I am a Christian? Can I produce any evidence that I am a Christian? Let's produce that evidence. Can my actions be pleasing to God? Or will I be reproached upon Christ and his church by my, by my lifestyle? Will I bring repro reproach to the church by my personal lifestyle? See, all the false doctrines, all the false teachers in the current time today are going to be exposed and revealed, and there will be a following. Where are all those followers going to go when, the, when those churches fall? When God reveals the wickedness that's been going on behind closed doors. There's nothing. We have to be transparent with who we are. We don't have all the answers every day and every gifts hasn't been given to every one of us. But in God's word, collectively, we grow and we press in every day, doing more today for the kingdom of God than I did yesterday, revealing my heart to those who are my mentors, opening up and saying, you know what? I am struggling with this area, whether it be over my children, over my finances, how I treat my wife. It doesn't matter. The more I'm transparent with God, the more he strengthens me, the more he blesses me, and the more I produce victory in my life. And you don't even have to buy into my podcast today to have that. Amen? It's not about positive thinking. It's not about my success going to make you better. It's about a heart yielded to Christ, falling on my knees, breaking my free will, and asking God to get me up from here and take me down his road of destiny, which is the purpose of riding on course with him. He already knows where he's called you to. We discover that when we press in. Can my actions be pleasing to God or will I bring reproach? Have I made an effect to lead others to Christ? Doing the work, looking for every opportunity to evangelize, to sow that seed, to lead somebody to Christ. That is for the whole corporate body of Christ. But we got to lead ourselves. We have to be saved. Amen. Born again. Spirit-filled. Loving God in our life. Let's go on. Some areas that we need. I'm going to go really quickly over these because of time. And I want to be able to pray with you. I pray that this message about the mindset of just barely trying to get by. It's not good enough. God requires his children who much is given, much is required. We are required to go up in Christ every day. And when we're in our mediocrity, we do nothing but honor the devil of this world. He is in those false religions. He owns our Sunday. He owns the belief and the books that are being written on the rapture and the twisting and the perverting of God's word. You have to dig and seek and press in. And the more you step out in that commitment, the more God will begin to bring the resources, the relationships, the people, the finances into your life. You sit there and dream and wish you had it, but then you turn around out of a double forked mouth and talk negativity over your own life. We can't do that any longer and expect God to be glorified. Amen. I've done it. Paul said, I have been the chief of all sinners but yet through transformation and accepting Christ Jesus as my Lord, he began to change my desires, my prayer changed, my faith changed, my reading, my study, my partnership, my relationships. Everything I do in my professional career, my ministry, my family has now changed because Christ is in the center of it and the Holy Spirit speaks to me directly. I don't just go to church and hear a message that will put you to sleep and warm in the pews and then come out and wonder why my life is no different. Because I'm just trying to get by. No, 
We're not going to do that. Some things that we need to focus on. I am sure that we can ask many questions about these probing questions. I know we can. Let's highlight a few of them. But those should be the significant ones that we want to make a point on. Look at this. The Christian has many responsibilities in our living to be acceptable to God. Now, it's not by work. He accepts us in his love. He saves us by salvation. But we have a season of growing in the rest of our life until he comes back for us by sanctifying our life, by growing spiritually, by operating and developing the fruit of God's gift in our life. How much of God do you want? How much of God are you willing to put him first place in your life? That is a question only you can ask. I was a radical in the world. I'm a radical for Christ today. Why? Because I realized how wrong I was. And when Jesus was whipped on his back, he took my infirmities, my sickness, every one of my family curses, and he broke them over my life and over my family today. And because of him, I want to let the world be known what he has done in my life. And that will be true of you if you truly are saved and not just getting by and hanging on. Amen. Uh, the Christian has many responsibilities except that some of these are areas of duty. So that's where the enemies and religion, the devil can twist those. What is my duty as a Christian? That's different than, 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 than my blessings and my covenant with God over here. Let's identify those. Here's a couple points and I'm going to wrap this up really quickly. Our focus of worship is very important. Do we do it in the spirit of truth? John 4 and verse 24 says that they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. You may be worshiping God in spirit, but your truth is false doctrine, false beliefs, false ideology, false systems of the world. You can have a God for a belief system for God over here, but your finances are in a disarray because you're not operating correctly in that area of your life. Expose it, submit it to God, ask him for his help. You have not because you ask not, have not because you ask not. And God is faithful, God is just, he wants to help you. Uh, don't We do not just follow the commands and the examples of the New Testament uh, of religion. So again, there's a whole thing about how we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. You can have all the word and memorize the word, but if you don't have a relationship with God's spirit, you can't hear him. That word does it's not notified. It's just nullified. And so you have the seed, but you need the fertilizer. You need to cover it. You need to saturate that. You put those things together and that's for the workman that's struggling to have more of God and seeking after him. And God says, man, if we put a little bit of belief that I have already done this, now you can receive from me that it's done. Start confessing that it's done. It has been done. God died for me. I don't have to sit here and, and listen to what the world tells me in these false things. Amen. Is your worship just an occupying of a pew to make yourself feel good? No, we need to radically worship God. Our focus on our work. So again, these are things that we should be focused on. Our worship, our work. Is it honorable to God? Does it provide me with a chance to provide for my family and others? Many people sometimes just get taken advantage of. You know, they're in a wrong system. They're in a wrong place. They, they're not... They, they just need to pray and obey God. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I can't tell you what to do in your life. You have to spend time in his presence. But I can tell you by the same principles that God corrected me, chastised me, disciplined me over in my mindsets and my heart are the same things that he does to us individually, to the body of Christ. Then corporately, the church needs to do the things that he has called her to do. Church is not that building. Church is the heart of man. Amen. Uh, does it allow me to have time, your work, to worship God? Our focus on recreation. Oh, man, this is a big one. Does it distract me from serving God? Is your hobbies, the things that you enjoy to do, is it a worship unto the Lord? Do you grab people that are stronger than you in faith and say, hey, let's go play a golf. Let's go team rope. 
Let us go spend time together so that we can strengthen one another. Iron sharpens iron. Amen. You can still have a hobby and a love. God gave you that love. But do it with new relationships. Do it with people that aren't sitting there and, you know, doing the tailgate party and cussing and just going to church and then going home and living a, a different life behind the doors. You're not going to not going to grow. You're not going to impact them until you get the mindset. You get the heart for God. You're growing with God. When you do that, God will send those things into your life. Amen. Love the world. Love the people. I love sinners. I want to be there. I want to speak to them, but I'm not going to let them, what they're participating in, rub off on me. I'm not going to judge them. I'm not the judger. I just know that I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm tempting Christ in me. I'm going to use the wisdom of God to go and street evangelize. I'm going to go do things that decreases my popularity, my influence, so that I can just be next to somebody that needs Christ more, that I can at least share and pray and touch him and say, brother, I don't know where you're at today, but I know that Christ can change your heart. Are you willing to receive Jesus today? And if you are, transformation, renewal, new creation in your heart, a new heart will God give you. That's where I want to be. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not coming against the church. But in a way, I'm talking about the mind of Christ being transformed, understanding salvation, understanding sanctification, understanding the fruit of the Spirit. So your work, your recreation, do I play with a fairness to all? Am I obsessed with my recreation to the point that it puts God's second place? Oh, now we're really preaching. I loved riding bulls more than I loved God in seasons of my life. And God would shake me up and he would say, Scott, you know, if you ride these bulls for me, the whole game will change. But as long as I was self-centered, as long as I knew more and I wanted more and I was doing, the crazy thing was I was doing those things thinking that I was being used of God. God doesn't care about the things in the world and the accomplishments and all the things that we produce in the material realm or the people that we can associate that associate with that are so popular, so famous, making your name be known. I'm here to make Jesus' name to be known. Amen? So we look at the recreation. We look at the work. We look at the worship. And if I get so obsessed with my recreation and my hobbies and I that it's stronger than my love for God, now it becomes covetousness and idolatry and a false sense of worship. Amen. I've got just a couple more. How about our speech? There is power in our tongue. Does it build up or tear down? Is it wholesome speech? Amen. Speak the love of God. Speak an anointing on things. Will it cause anybody to be offended? Sometimes speaking the truth in love will offend the people that do not want to be willing to live by the truth. You're going to offend somebody, but you can do it in love, and that's not the motive. The motive is that we agree up, we agree upon the things that Christ has done. Christ has commissioned the body of Christ to live by. Amen? We fight not against flesh and blood, but, against, but uh, by principalities and wickedness in the heavenly realms. Satan's mindsets. The only mind he controls, the only power he has is the ability that puts something in your mind that is false and deceptive and lies. So worship, work, recreation, speech. How about our dress? Amen. The way we come across to others. Why do we dress the way that we do? Obviously, I can talk about women. Obviously, I can talk about culture. You know, uh, obviously, there's times that we have to dress up and get our fancy hats out. And our boots and all those things are wonderful, but that doesn't change who we are. You can close the outside of the body and the world will look at you a different way. But God says, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much possession you have. I know inside of your heart you're empty and you're lost and you are without me. His word and that covenant relationship and not just trying to have the mindset of just getting by so I can sneak into heaven. Amen. I've got to wrap this up um, talking about those things. I don't want to be a stumbling block in my speech, in my dress, in my possessions. I want to be who God created me to be. I want to be a part of the answer 
to the problem that's going on in the world today. And that is why you're watching this broadcast today, because God has given you destiny. We're talking about how to ride on course with your Heavenly Father. Not the world, not the system of the world, but with God. And sometimes we have to remove every limitation, every circumstance out of our life. We have to begin to rebuke. We have to begin to fast and pray and let God show you what he wants to do in your life. He's willing. He's able. Now, here's how I want to wrap this up. So many things we can talk about. Our associates, our place of recreation, our habits, our dress. Anything else that you want to see or others see as you? Are we trying to truly serve God? Or are we trying to just do those things well enough? You see, folks, it's not about works. It's not about legalism. It's not about false religions. I don't want to be known as a Baptist. I don't want to be known as a Catholic. I don't want to be known as a Pentecostal, you know, whatever. I don't want to be known as a Mormon. But I'm telling you, those things are out there. New Age religion is out there. The devil trying to change our worship, trying to change our mindset. He has been trying to tempt man ever since he tempted Adam and Eve in the garden. But he can't tempt the one who has already died to self and has already renewed our mind to say, I'm not just trying to get by. I hope that God comes and gets me in my misery, in my pain, and just saves me and takes me away from all this. If you just barely make it into heaven, you're going to go to class in heaven. When I get to heaven, I want to receive the crowns and the rewards for the life that I've lived here today. For this message, for other messages, for being transparent with you, telling you I was not always a man of God. I was a heathen as a child. I had a dysfunctional upbringing. I had to figure out by the way of riding bulls my true identity in Christ Jesus. Amen. I love you. God loves you. I pray that you will renew your mind to God's word so that these daily habits and actions will not lead into a mindset of bondage. Amen. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you truly need to do that. God didn't call us to be this denomination, that denomination. When you're funding a system, you need to quit funding a false system. Starting in the very elementary place, I'm not going to fund any more negative thoughts coming into my mind, telling me what I should be, telling me who I need to be in the culture that I live in. I am going to be a faithful child of God, blood-bought, seeking after my father to worship him with all of my heart so that he makes his plans clear to me of why he created me. He created all of us to have a family, to have a relationship, to be born again spiritually. We're not going back into our mother's womb as Nicodemus talked about. No, God always has symbolic meaning for the speech that he was talking about in parables so that as you become a child of God, you begin to say, wow, a light bulb goes off. Jesus died for me, not just an old crusty religion. And so I'm asking you today, quit trying to just barely get by. Walk in the authority of what Christ has already done. Claim it, apply it to your life, your family, your ministry. Get discipled. Get radical about evangelizing the world. Whatever you begin to do for others, God certainly takes care of you and your family as you walk under a covenant with him. Amen. I love you. I want to pray for you right now. My time is up today. Father, I pray for my partners today who have watched this. I pray that if there's anybody that is watching this today who has been under the mindset of Jesus, come quickly, get me out of this situation that I find myself in, they would break that decision in their life right now. And they will live with purpose and the fear of you, Father, a reverential fear knowing that you are all powerful and that you have called us by the simple childlike faith to say, Jesus, forgive me. I am a sinner, but I desire today to take up my cross and to follow you. 
Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sins. I ask you that you fill me with your spirit and provide me with the resources, the relationship, the mentors of my life, the right church, the right Bible translation, the right workbook that I have to go through in my life, Lord, whatever I must do to grow in my relationship with you. Father, I am willing. I know that you are willing. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for setting me on course. I want to ride with you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father God, for this great word today. May you be exalted in my life today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, this is one of those messages I remember telling my wife. I said, ah, this is a good message. This is a fun message. I'm preaching to you on things today that God has clearly over the course of my life and my career discovering what my identity is. I'm so excited. I pray that it blesses you. I pray that this ministry has been effective and a revelation to you. Thank you for your financial support, your partnership. Just go online, westernharvestministries.com, scottmendes.com. Email us, share this video with others, and until next week, just know this. We love you, God loves you, and we'll see you down the road. Keep riding on course with your Heavenly Father. God bless. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.